Very surprised to learn that the Remain campaign is funded by Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and JP Morgan. Oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely not. Uh, really doesn't surprise me one bit. Whilst the Remain campaign tries to sort of frame itself, you know, as progressive, universalist, cosmopolitan, again tied to that idea of the European social model, which A, doesn't really exist, B, is premised upon exploiting very poor countries in the global south. Not at all. This is about European capitalism. It's about uh, an actor at the global stage which has pushed an agenda which favours the Goldman Sachs, which favours the, the Morgan Stanleys, which favours the Deutsche Banks and the HSBCs, right? So of course they would fund Britain to stay in the EU. The EU is a hugely important pillar of this whole thing, of the global economy as it's currently constituted, which you know has been on a neoliberal trajectory since the early 1970s. Britain leaves, that thing might not exist anymore, and that whole order would be, I wouldn't say endangered, but it would look a lot more shaky than it presently does, right? So I'm not surprised in the slightest. They've thrown money at this thing. Okay, quite, quite a few people on the left seem relatively sort of undisturbed by the fact that we don't elect the EU Commission. Does it matter to you that we don't elect the EU Commission? Okay, so... Everybody's been talking about how the European Union has a democratic deficit for decades. So what does that mean? It means that uh, we have a parliament, sure. That parliament's incredibly weak. Yes, we vote for it, but it's incredibly weak. The Scottish parliament has more competences, more powers invested in it than the European parliament. That's the elected bit. The commission is the unelected bit. Now, some people are quite disingenuous about this, and they say the commission is like a civil service, it's like Whitehall. That's just not true. The Commission has a, has a real agenda-setting power when it comes to the EU. So it's very different to Whitehall. And that's an important power, agenda-setting, right? Very important power. It's uh, When we talk about the executive or functions of government, agenda-setting is one of them, right? So it, it has executive powers. It's not just purely a bureaucracy. In terms of the commissioners, uh, so the whole thing's undemocratic. Then people say, well, look, the commissioners are decided at the level of the nation state and people vote for these domestic governments. I mean, this is just nonsense. So, you know, when you're talking about British trade policy, I'm sure there's lots of people and they look at what's going on in countries in sub-Saharan Africa. A big part of that is trade policy, right? A big driver of that, as I've already said, is the EU. Now, Brits were upset about that, Germans were upset about that, or French or Italian or Spanish nationals were upset about that. Well, tough luck. There's nothing you can do about it, right? Because nobody votes for the commissioner. Nobody. Right? So how is he accountable to you? How could you vote him or her out? You can't. I mean, there is no definition of democracy which internalizes that kind of logic. I mean, it's just a complete farce.